May 2016, I graduated from Boston University with a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. Afterwards, I packed my bags and headed to Tsinghua University, located 7,000 miles away from home in Beijing, China, and graduated with a master's degree in mechanical engineering in the July of 2018. A month later, I started my first full-time job in Boston as a mechanical engineer too at a company called Sloan, who specializes in the design and manufacture of automatic flush valves. After working in the East Coast for three and a half years, I wanted to try something a little different and see what all the hype was about in Silicon Valley. So I started my new job as a product and process design engineer at Foxconn working on next generation iPhones. Life was good, but it just wasn't for me. And now I'm an unemployed engineer with over four years of engineering experience and two mechanical engineering degrees worth over 100 grand in search of my next dream job. Being unemployed means I have the freedom to do whatever I want, whenever I want, which can be both a good and a bad thing. I don't have to worry about being late to work, so my body naturally wakes up at 10.30 or later, but never earlier. Like 99% of the population, the first thing I do is check my phone, specifically how many YouTube subscribers I gain overnight, and how many job rejections I receive from job recruiters via email. To make myself feel a little better and assure myself that I'm not alone, I go on LinkedIn to see the overwhelming number of software engineers that got laid off from Twitter and the fang companies. Finally, I hop out of bed at around 11.30, do my typical morning routine, and cook a well-balanced brunch. Despite all of the negativity and job rejections, I've learned to master the art of not feeling sorry for myself and not giving a fuck early on as an engineer, and to enjoy and live in the moment. I know that it's only a matter of time before I find a job, so long as I don't give up. After breakfast, I spend an hour planning the content for my next YouTube video, which consists of brainstorming, scripting, filming, and editing. One of my favorite hobbies is videography and filmmaking, which helps me cope with the stress that comes with job hunting. As much as I love working as an engineer, I have more time that would otherwise be spent working for someone else in the office. Instead, I can work for myself now and do things that I actually care about like spending time with friends and family. Anyways, one of my dreams is to become a YouTuber, so I'm constantly finding ways to improve my video quality and deliver the most value to my viewers, whether that means learning new video editing techniques in Premiere Pro or cool tips and tricks on my DJI Osmo Pocket, which is what I use to film my YouTube videos. Normally, I start to feel lethargic around 2 p.m., so that's when I drink coffee and do some easy HIT workouts to get my blood flowing and re-energize. I didn't spend the next hour or so applying for job opportunities in the US on LinkedIn and job opportunities in China on Liaping and 51 Job. Most of the roles I'm applying for are mechanical engineering related positions in the consumer electronics, automotive, and medical industries. By this time, it's 4 p.m. and I receive a notification that I have a 30-minute one-on-one phone interview with Apple China in an hour. Now I head to my desk to do some interview prep before my interview at 5 p.m. Over the years, I've compiled a document containing a list of common interview questions that I've been asked by 30-plus companies and detailed answers to these questions. These include both non-technical and behavioral questions like why do you want to work for us or tell me a time you disagreed with your manager as well as technical questions like how would you produce a part with undercuts and what manufacturing process would you use. Although my interview was scheduled for 5 p.m., I waited until 5.05 p.m. and never received a call. I directly messaged the HR lady informing her that I was ready and she proceeded to tell me that she was in a meeting and wouldn't be finished until 5.30, which I found to be very unprofessional and pretty Apple-esque. So the interview started exactly at 5.30 sharp. She began by briefly asking me about my past experience and why there was a gap between my previous and current job. Next, she introduced all of the open product design engineering roles available in China, which included cities like Shanghai and Shenzhen, each responsible for different product lines like the iPhone, iWatch, iPad, and Mac, and she asked me what my preferred locations were. Afterwards, she asked what's my expected salary, which is a question that virtually every job recruiter will ask, especially in Asia, but it's always a question that I refuse to answer if it's asked early on in the interview process. Finally, she wrapped things up by asking me five basic technical questions, and if I answer four correctly, then I have an opportunity to move on to the second round of interviews. The first question was, which material conducts heat the best? Aluminum, steel, copper, or brass? Second question was, what variable has the greatest impact on the deflection of a cantilever beam? Third question, 
Does the inner diameter of a donut decrease or increase after it's baked in an oven and cooled at room temperature? Question 4. Which material property represents failure? Elastic modulus, yield strength, or ultimate strength? Question 5. If you wanted to decrease the moment of inertia of a rectangular cross-section, what could you do? The interview then ends around 6 p.m. and it turns out to be a lot easier than I expect. After every interview, no matter how well or how bad it went, I always feel burned out and so I temporarily wipe it away from my memory by engaging in hobbies and one of my main hobbies right now is cooking. Because I live in a small city in Ohio, there aren't a lot of good restaurants so I enjoy cooking different types of cuisines. Tonight I'll be making Indian and Pakistani food, specifically beef biryani. There's an overwhelming number of variations for biryani on YouTube, so I just picked this video that has 21 million views and it turned out to be amazing. Link in the description if you're interested. This dish does call for a lot of different spices like garlic, ginger, bay leaves, cloves, cinnamon, and cardamom, but luckily these were things I already had because I make a lot of Chinese food that uses a lot of the same ingredients. Now I boil some basmati rice for about 10 minutes until it's al dente. I wish you guys could smell this because the fragrance is out of this world. While the rice is cooking, I go out into the desolate tundra, aka my backyard, to harvest some cilantro and mint that I will use to garnish the biryani with. By this time the rice is finished and I completely cover the beef with the rice and turn the heat to max for 8 minutes. Now it's time to plate and enjoy this magnificent meal fit for a king. After dinner, it's around 8 p.m. and I try to squeeze in an hour of table tennis and burn some calories. A lot of people think table tennis is easy and not really a sport, but it actually requires a high level of mental focus and a quick reaction time. If both players are somewhat skilled, it can really make you sweat from all the back and forth and side to side motions during a match. Whenever I'm waiting to hear back from a company I interview for, my hobbies help to keep me sane. Anyway, now it's 9pm and I wind down by taking a hot shower, brainstorming new video ideas, and contemplating the meaning of life. Before I head off to bed, I watch two episodes of one of my favorite reality cooking shows, Master Chef. This TV show features amateur chefs who compete for $250,000, a trophy, and the title of Master Chef. They participate in some very interesting challenges such as the skills test where they cut things like onions and the mystery box challenge where everyone is given a box containing the same ingredients and everyone must create a dish using only those ingredients in a set amount of time. I gotta say that the three judges on the show have very unique personalities and make this show very addicting. Now it's finally midnight and I'm about to go to bed with the hope that I will wake up to some good news tomorrow.